In this video, we're talking about difference amplifiers, one of the most useful applications of op amps. Stick around until the end and you'll feel like a pro at op amps in no time. Let's kick things off with a simple example. Picture two containers of water, each at a different temperature. Now, say you want to measure the temperature difference automatically, in real time. How would you pull that off? The first step is easy. Drop a temperature sensor in each container. Each sensor spits out a voltage that tracks the water's temperature. But here's the puzzle. How do we take those two voltages and get just their difference? Sure, you could grab an Arduino, write some code, and let it do the subtraction for you. But honestly, that's overkill. Using a microcontroller for a job this simple is like rolling out a bulldozer just to plant a single flower. It'll work, but most of the power is wasted. There's a much cleaner solution, a difference amplifier. All you need is a basic op amp chip and a few resistors. That's it. No software, no debugging, no maintenance headaches, just a solid little hardware circuit you can put together for under a dollar. And if op amps are a brand new territory for you, I recommend checking out our introduction video first. It shows how these chips make analog math surprisingly easy. But for now, let's do a quick refresher. Unlike a resistor, capacitor, or even a transistor, an op amp isn't just one single part. It's actually a whole circuit built from those building blocks, all packed neatly into one tiny chip. That's why they come as ICs, integrated circuits. But the real magic of an op amp comes from how you connect it. With just a few resistors, you can make a circuit that literally does math with voltages. You can add them, subtract them, scale them up or down, even integrate or differentiate them. And that's just the beginning. In this video, we'll focus on one of the simplest and most practical tricks, using an op amp to subtract one voltage from another. And if you're curious about the other things op amps can pull off, check out our playlist. We've got plenty of examples where these little chips love to show off. Op amps are usually used in one of two modes, open loop or closed loop. In open loop, there's no feedback, so the gain is enormous, hundreds of thousands or more. That's why open loop mode is mainly used in comparators, where the only job is to figure out which input is bigger. We've got a full video on comparators, link in the description. But most real circuits use closed loop with negative feedback through resistors. This feedback reigns in that massive gain, keeps the circuit stable, and makes the op amp behave in a nice linear way. Closed loop designs are the backbone of op amp circuits. Inverting, non-inverting, summers, difference amps, integrators, differentiators, you name it. And in this video, we'll be building our difference amplifier in closed loop mode. Before we dive into applications, there are two golden rules for analyzing op amps with negative feedback. They come straight from the ideal op amp model and they make circuit analysis so much easier. Rule one, no current flows into the input terminals. In other words, an ideal op amp has infinite input resistance. Rule two, with negative feedback, the voltages at the inverting and non-inverting inputs are equal. The op amp constantly drives its output to keep their difference practically zero. These rules only hold when negative feedback is present, but when it is, predicting what the circuit will do becomes surprisingly simple. All right, that's enough of the intro. Now that we've covered the basics, let's dive into the difference amplifier itself. The good news, it's surprisingly easy to build. All you need is an op amp chip and a few resistors. Power it up, put a feedback resistor from the output back to the inverting input, and connect another resistor from the non-inverting input down to ground. Then feed in your signals. One goes into the inverting input through its resistor, and the other goes into the non-inverting input through its resistor. That's the entire circuit. The output voltage comes out as a weighted difference between the two inputs. And don't worry about the word weighted. If we choose the resistor values carefully, the output becomes simply the difference between the input voltages. Sounds almost too simple, right? Let's prove it by walking through the fundamentals. We'll strip away the fluff and keep only what really matters. In the schematic, we won't bother drawing the dual power rails just to keep things neat, but remember, they're always there in the real circuit. Here's what we do show. A feedback resistor from the output to the inverting input, 
another resistor tying the non-inverting input to ground, one signal fed into the inverting input through its own resistor, and the other signal fed into the non-inverting input through its own resistor. And that's it. That's the classic difference amplifier, often simply called a subtractor in its simplest form. Let's give the math a clean landing pad by labeling everything. The input voltages are V1 and V2, and the output is V out. We'll set ground as zero volts, handy when we start writing equations. The voltages at the inverting and non-inverting inputs will be V3 and V4. Now for the currents. Through the two input resistors, we'll define I1 and I2. The op amp's input currents are labeled I3 for the inverting input and I4 for the non-inverting input. The feedback resistor carries I5, and the resistor from V4 down to ground carries I6. Great, everything's labeled. Now we can move into the analysis in a few crisp steps. Because this circuit uses negative feedback, the golden rules apply. Rule 1. No current flows into the op amp inputs. That means I3 and I4 are both zero. So, the current coming through resistor R1 has nowhere else to go. It must flow through the feedback path RF. That gives us our first equation. I1 equals I5. On the non-inverting side, the current through resistor R3 also has nowhere else to go except down through the resistor to ground. So I2 equals I6. That's our second equation. Rule 2. With negative feedback, the op amp drives its output so the inverting and non-inverting inputs sit at the same voltage. In other words, V3 equals V4. That's our third equation. With those three rules in place, we can now use Ohm's law to turn currents into voltages and see exactly how the output responds to the inputs. Let's start with equation one. I1 equals I5. Looking at the circuit, I1 flows through resistor R1, and I5 flows through the feedback resistor, RF. By Ohm's law, each current can be written as the voltage difference across its resistor divided by the resistance. Substituting those expressions into the equation gives us a relationship for V3, the voltage at the inverting input. Now, let's do the same for equation 2. I2 equals I6. Again, watch the resistors the currents flow through. I2 flows through R2, and I6 flows through R3 down to ground. Writing both currents with Ohm's law and substituting them back into the equation gives us an expression for V4, the voltage at the non-inverting input. Now, from equation 3, we know V3 and V4 are equal. So let's take the expressions we found for each and set them equal to one another. At first, the algebra looks a little messy, but don't worry. Just keep solving step by step and make V out the subject of the equation. You'll get a bulky looking expression, but it can be simplified. Here's the trick. Notice the fractional terms. Each one is really just a ratio between two resistor values. That's the key to cleaning things up. So let's make a smart assumption. Set RF over R1 equal to R3 over R2. Call that common ratio K. With that substitution, most of the clutter cancels out, and we're left with a beautifully simple result. V out equals K times V2 minus V1. And if all four resistors are equal, then K equals 1, and the output is just the clean difference between the two inputs. Pretty neat, right? And that's it, the heart of the difference amplifier. By choosing the resistor values the way we want, this simple little circuit gives us the difference between two input voltages in real time. No code, no clocks, just physics doing the math. Don't worry about memorizing the final equations. Instead, practice deriving them. After a few tries, you'll find you can solve almost any op-amp circuit with ease. For more practice, check out our complete op-amp playlist. I'll be uploading exam-focused problems soon. And if you enjoyed this lesson, don't forget to like and subscribe for more practical and engaging electronics videos.